Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sidney Levy and today I'm here to discuss the diagnosis and staging of uh, oral tongue squamous cell malignancy. In previous vignettes we've been discussing the anatomy of the oral cavity and its subsites. Now I'd like to move along to describing the characteristics of squamous cell malignancy in this region. I have uh, identified a case uh, of uh, left lateral oral tongue squamous cell malignancy, which I'd like to use to demonstrate the general principles of its MR appearance. And then in our next vignette, we will go on to stage the tumor. So firstly, I have uh, uh, axial sequences, pre-contrast T1 without fat suppression, post-contrast T1 with fat suppression, coronal T2 weighted imaging with fat suppression, and sagittal post-contrast T1 weighted imaging with fat suppression. The malignancy is identified here. It is involving the lateral margin of the tongue. That is the most common site of oral tongue squamous cell malignancy, followed by the undersurface and the dorsum and the tip. The undersurface of the oral tongue is generally considered with the floor of mouth. So if that is the site of origin of the tumor, it is generally considered a floor of mouth tumor rather than an oral tongue tumor. This MRI demonstrates a T1 hypo intense tumor with respect to normal tongue mucosa. I'm now going to draw its margins for you so that you can appreciate what I'm trying to describe. The tumor itself is here. You can see it more easily on the post-contrast T1, and the T2 weighted imaging, it is extending inferiorly into the floor of mouth here, and on the sagittal imaging, it is involving the undersurface of the oral tongue and the adjacent floor of mouth. So therefore, it is an oral tongue malignancy that has extended directly into the ipsilateral left floor of mouth. So what do we describe when we have these lesions? Firstly, you need to give a dimension because staging is determined by the dimensions of the tumor. You need to look for the maximal dimension. In this case, it's about five centimeters in the sagittal projection. You also need to document whether there is crossing of the midline. In this case, it's a challenge. And the reason for that is that we have one image here where there is indeed bulging of the tumor at the level of the midline, just here. Now you can't see it clearly cross over to the right side, but there's certainly bulging and there would certainly be suspicion that the tumor is about to or has begun to extend to the contralateral side. Why is that important? Because that helps determine the degree of surgical resection, how much tongue needs to be removed at the time of surgery. You also need to document the depth of invasion. So the depth of invasion is a new criterion in the staging of oral cavity malignancy, which was introduced in the eighth edition of the AJCC guidelines at the beginning of 2018. So at its thickest portion, this tumor is clearly well more than 10 millimeters in depth of invasion. So it's a high stage tumor purely based on that. We've documented that it extends to the floor of mouth. It does not extend to any other oral cavity subsites. So the last thing we need to consider is what are the differentials? Could this be a base of tongue squamous cell carcinoma? No, it can't be. The posterior third of tongue is spared. This is an oral tongue malignancy restricted to the anterior two thirds. Could it be a floor of mouth malignancy? spreading to the oral tongue. Its center is really within the oral tongue and although it does extend inferiorly into the floor of mouth, it would be classified as an oral tongue tumor by most radiologists. Does it look like any other lesions that uh, occur in this region, such as schwannomas? Doesn't look like a schwannoma. Schwannomas are well circumscribed in general and enhanced strongly, often associated with the lingual nerve in this region. Could it be a venous malformation? It, it is a mass, it's not really a collection of tortuous vessels, so not really thinking of that. 
Abscesses can occur in the oral tongue, however, they have typical features of abscesses such as a necrotic center and a peripheral rim. So really, we have a standard case of a oral tongue squamous cell malignancy and we will move on to lymph nodes. So for lymph nodes, it's important to refresh your memory on the lymph node levels. We have three abnormal lymph nodes in this patient. They are in level 2A bilaterally. So both these lymph nodes here. And then on the left hand side, we have another lymph node which is heading into level 3 below the level of the inferior border of the hyoid. And lastly, you need to look for any evidence of distant malignancy, which there isn't in this patient. So in our next vignette, we will formally stage this patient according to the AJCC 8th edition guidelines, TNM staging.